Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at methods. Um, in some languages, they call them methods, functions. Yeah, GameMaker will also call them scripts. And what they are, they're chunks of code that have already been written for you and given a name. And they do something for you. Or they calculate something for you and send you an answer back. Uh, easier just to show you. So let's take a look. You'll see here in my little sample program, I've already used methods before. When I hit the space bar, you use a method called instance create to create an object. Now this method obviously has some extra lines of code coded into it behind the scenes, but you never have to worry about it. You just use the method. So you just type instance create. You'll see that game maker codes methods orange, just like audio play sound. That's a method. So you might have called this a command before. Technically, you know, it's called a method. Now You'll see this method, instance create. You need to actually give it three things for it to work. These three things are called parameters. Uh, they're sometimes also called arguments. So these parameters slash arguments are necessary for instance create to run. So if you actually popped into the code to see what instance create is doing, it's going to use the x, the y value, and this name to perform its task of creating an object on the screen. You'll notice the brackets. The brackets are popular with methods. Um, let me show you another method here that you've used quite a bit. Uh, it's wall. Arrow hits the wall. Another method is instance destroy. That's been pre-coded for you. You just use it a lot. Notice it uses the brackets. Nothing between the brackets though. No parameters for that method. So not all methods need parameters. Some methods have a bunch of parameters, like effect create, right? Lots of parameters you toss in there. It's uh, nice to note here that whenever you do use a method, you'll notice that down here, it names the method, and it tells you what those parameters are. So what kind of effect, the x and y location, the size, and the color. And that's supposed to match up when you code it in, right? If you don't match it up, then the method won't work, or at least it won't work properly. So that's sort of the basics on methods. Now, there's another nice thing about methods we'll talk about in a bit, and it's what this method does. You'll see that this method actually also sends us back some information. That's why I can do this. Arty equals whatever that method sends back. And it's a bit of a tricky idea we'll talk about later, but this method, after it makes the arrow, the arrow's given like a, a special number, like 1,756. And that number is the arrow's ID. This method actually sends back that ID. So really what you're doing when you do this line is like 1,756. That's sort of what this line is actually reading like. That's called the return value of the method. So I'm going to show you some more simple methods that also return information so you can get the hang of that, right? So three terms, the method name, the parameters or the arguments, and then return values. Sometimes it sends something back. So let's take a look with uh, a little sample or two. Let's add an event here, and let's do key press letter T. I'll do T for testing. And now let's just stick some code here. I'm going to give you an example of a method uh, that does something really simple for us. Um, maybe in math, you might want to take a number and you may want to raise it to a power. So GameMaker has a method built in already called power. And you'll see here the power it tells me what I have to put in it. X and N. And I already know what this is. This is like 5, comma, and you tell it to what power? Power of 2. Now, if we actually want to see this, let's just do a little uh, show message of the answer. And just see what this does. This is a great example of a method that sends back a number to you. So you give it the parameters, 5 and 2, and the power method will return a number back to you. And that's why I can do this here. Answer equals whatever that sends back. 
Now, those that are really good at math know that 5 to the power of 2 is 25. This line is exactly the same as writing this. Answer equals 25. I like to tell students a lot, when you use a method that returns a number, that is a number. So this is a number just like any number. So just to give this a quick test to make sure it works, let's give it a quick play. We'll hit the T key. And you'll see it does write out the 25. So that's a nice little task for us. Now, that task, you may say, well, I'm never going to do powers. I would just do that in my head. But remember, you have some other nice methods you can use scattered throughout GameMaker. If you actually go to the question mark here, you can peek inside their list of methods and variables and things to know. And there's a lot of things there. They're not all methods, but there is one there that's a really useful one. There's one called point distance. This is a method, returns the distance between these two points. So let's just give that one a little go right now and see what happens. So point distance. Notice all the game maker methods here do usually give you a pretty decent description of what they are and how to use them. So let's use that one in our game. I'm going to do something like this. I'll say uh, distance. So I'll just say D equals point distance. Now remember, I'm coding in the player right now. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say from my X and my Y. Remember, those are values that the player has. And let's see how far they are away from 500, 500. That should calculate an answer for us. They're probably going in there, doing some uh, A squared, B squared, C squared stuff, right? Real mathy stuff. And then it sends back an answer. So that becomes the number. And D equals that number. Then I can print out D. So let's just give this a test. And I'll just do it while moving the player around a bit. So from here, I'm 335.31 away. I move a little closer to 500, 500. Yeah, now I'm only 174 away. Only 166 away. And you can see the idea here that if you ever want to do any routines that involve distance, you're not going to code those yourself, probably. You can use just use the point distance method, right? And it sends you back the numbers. So that's a nice one to do, and that's used in a lot of different things. Okay, especially like splash damage is a great one for that. Now, another method I'll just quickly show you here is, I don't know if you noticed, but when the program was running, I was uh, constantly in the step method, giving my player some points. And if you see the points on the screen, these points just keep ticking up, but they're all ticking up in decimals. Now let's say you don't like that, you just want to show the whole number of that. Let's just uh, find a little method that'll help us out with that. So when I go to the help thing here, I can go math, and then it has uh, other math functions I should be able to find out. So here's maths. I keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Now I already know the answer to this, but here's some nice math methods. They call them functions here in GameMaker. Here's one called floor. Let's see what this one does. Returns. So it's going to send us back a number. The given number rounded down. Oh, perfect. So I give it a number. It rounds it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one in my draw method here. So let's just go to draw. Draw. And when I'm right here, instead of drawing out the player's points, I can just do this. I can draw out the floor of the points. Now you can use methods like this inside of other methods like string. Okay, remember, this is just a number when it's finished, so you treat it just like a number. So if it's 55, no different than that. Now what this will do is this will be rounding down before it draws. So when you watch this one taking place, you'll see that the points this time, they don't actually show the number, right? They're just showing the floor of the number. So the points are slowly tricking up, trickling up. Now remember, that's not a, that's not seconds, right? That's points, so it seems a little slow, but it's sort of working nicely. 
Now this idea of using the methods, we're going to use them a lot in the rest of the course, right? And I'll just be sort of freewheeling and using methods out of the blue. If you never know what a method is, you want to read about it more, that's the place to go into the index. Type that method in. Like if you see me use point distance. Oh, point distance. Tells you the distance between, you know, the two points. And then you get to use it. Now, lots of methods. Some uh, send you back numbers. Some send you back true, false. Let's take a peek at one or two of those ones. So let's go to the player here. I'm going to do a little uh, method that checks to see uh, what's at a certain location. So just to show you true, false, here's a coin. And this coin, I'm just peeking here at the X and the Y position. This coin is at 128, sorry, 144, 400. So 144, 400. You guys remember that one, 144, 400. And let's go to that T key again. And I'll just take this code out. If I wanted to ask if there was a coin there, I know there's a method in here called position meeting. Now the position meeting method, it wants an X and a Y. So let's give it 144, 400. And I want to know if it's meeting a coin. Now the nice thing with this method is if I actually look it up in the help file, this one says position meeting. This one says it checks. And down here it says this will return true or false. So when it says returns a boolean, boolean literally means it's going to return the word true or false. Because that's all you're trying to find out, right? Is there something there? So I can do something like this. If position meeting is true, show message coin is there. Okay, let's give this one a little check, see if this one works. So I'm going to hit the T key, and there is a coin there, Okay, which is pretty good. Now if you wanted to get fancier with that method, you could even do this. Remember, you don't always have to put in hard numbers there. I could say the players running this code, I could say player X, player Y. So the player X and the player's Y, is there a coin at that location? So basically this is another way of checking am I on top or touching a coin. When I give this one a go, you'll see as I constantly hit the T key, I hit T now, it's not doing anything, I'm not on a coin. But when I get near a coin, there is a coin there, right? My X and Y position is hitting the coin. So you'll see how these methods eventually are actually going to let us do a lot of things that maybe you've already been doing just with like the collision event. We'll be able to take control and do a lot of these things manually by using a lot of the pre-built methods. Next lesson, we're actually going to show you how to sort of make your own methods slash scripts so that you can make your own chunks of code and give them names and make your programs way more efficient. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see more about methods later, but that's a good little intro. At least you can start using them.